RW, where nerds rule the world, back for another K Fabi baby NRW Ring Generals podcast. I'm Kuya P. And as always, I'm joined by my NRW's trios champions. First up, the the, the stylish one of, of, of us all. Uh, he wears the bow tie, but today he's wearing <laughs> the regular tie. My man, Webster Style, how are you, sir? <laughs> the suspenders. You doing good, just lounging. There we go, lounging. And of course, um, the one with the wee booty this time. We Flexing booty. as always, Mr. Sean Mongold, how are you, sir? What's going on, y'all? Good to see you, man. Uh, yeah, we were, yeah. And we're going to talk about that later at the end of it, right? <laughs> Backlash France. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to recap uh, from our picks from last week, y'all. And uh, But before we do that, we're going to talk a little bit of AEW. Um, might be a short episode this week, y'all, because we got a lot of things going on. Uh, but let's let us let us talk about it. As Cody Rhodes, uh, well, he's, he'd say, uh, what do you want to talk about? Uh, let's let's talk a little bit of AEW, uh, some other going-ons uh, in the world of wrestling, and, of course, the results of uh, Backlash France a little bit. I'm very excited about this moment, obviously, as you can tell from the background. Um, I love me uh, this beautiful black girl magic in Bianca and Jade. Uh, so we'll get to that. Uh, but let's talk AEW. Um, kind of forgetful. I don't know about you guys personally, but uh, I tuned in a little bit. I think when we recorded last week, we we had Dynamite like right after we got done. Yep. It's okay, I guess. Uh, Rampage, I think. Was that like a doubleheader? I don't know. Or maybe we were talking, you were saying Patrick and Webster style because you had watched it, Sean, and you were like, you need to finish yeah. it up. Uh, you know, I, I saw, you know, Kenny's back and everything. Uh, but I don't know. I'm still kind of in a weird stasis with him, if you will, like a like a butterfly. Uh, well, a, a, a caterpillar becoming a butterfly. I, I'm in a, still in a weird mode now. I think they're they're firing on some triggers a little bit with the Jack Perry stuff. Um, you know, we obviously have uh, uh, the Young Bucks, you know, kind of running the show a little bit to a degree. Uh, we love that uh, Tony is still kind of keeping the brace on a little bit. Um, but I don't know. It's kind of weird. I don't I don't. I don't know. I'm still in a weird mode. How how are you feeling about uh, AEW right now, Webster? Style? I mean, Sean. Oh, I, uh, I think we talked about it last week, but I mean, I'm actually liking um, a little bit more. It's kind of like turning this curve. You know, it's hitting this this turn here. Um, I just don't know about the I don't know what it is. Right like, now. you know, there's a lot of things I thought I wasn't going to like. Um, I mean, <laughs> it's it's they, they book things differently, right? right? Like they they book these like fantasy booking matches, which is great. You know, that's what a lot of people want to see. And our big complaint was the stories and not getting there. But like I, I think, like I said, I think they're hitting the turn. You know, you have Kenny coming back, but it's kind of like a you know a pass. You know, just like he got announced, he didn't even know he was getting announced. He's not back full time, kind of doing the Will Ospreay thing, come out, right. did a promo. You know, he got beat down by the Young Bucks and shit. So the Young Bucks are doing like this authority kind of role now, like the old school authority WWE days. You know, they, they overtook Dynamite. Tony is injured. They're on production. They have their own intro now for AW, which is all the elite stuff, you know, which I, I like because it's heel. Right. You know, is it pretentious? Yes. You know, I, I secretly think this is what they wanted all along. Um, but they just kind of turned it into like this heel dynamic, which works. You know, now you got Jack Perry out there, you know, and yeah, I mean, they, they use the CM Punk shit to their advantage, you know, but they'll, they'll always be remembered. You know, Jack Perry's always going to be remembered. Like it took another motherfucker that, got fired from the company to get you over. Yep. You know, so he's always going to be remembered that way, whether he likes it or not. Mm -hmm. Without CM Punk, you wouldn't be selling merch. You wouldn't be in this position right now with the elite. You know, so it is what it is. But yeah, I mean, a lot of other things, you know, you have the the, the best friends breaking up, which was great. Um, yep. Yeah, I think it's also awkward. And... Yeah, no, you know, because we, we, yeah, we did chat about this last week. I just, from from our conversation last week to now, with what they gave us, does it not feel still slightly awkward? And even some of the posts online, I don't know. And 
y'all, we brought up Sasha too last week and just, just how that is. But I'm just have a weird vibe right now with my gal. Like just some of her posts. She's posting a little bit more, but it feels like forced in different respects. I don't know. It doesn't feel natural. Yeah. Are y'all getting that vibe at all? Yeah. From, I, from I Mercedes? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. sometimes Absolutely. she would also just be infrequent. And that's just her modus operandi. But now because of just how everything is, is the climate is, and with the appearances that she's somewhat giving off, or at least what the public thinks of her right now, and with everything, I feel like she's doing more work because of that to, to counteract that. But it just, it's just awkward as a fan of her. What do you think, Webster Style? Yeah. Yeah, I. No, much like Sean said, I agree in that regard with Mercedes. There's just something that comes off as off. It is, it. It has not come off as polished. It has not come off as impactful as we would expect it to be. And in many respects, and like the best friends, I'm glad they're doing that. Even the whole sort of innuendo of Orange possibly joining Callis family. I, th I like that. I do appreciate that. Uh, I do like overall that we're getting C's for stories and they're going forward. I hate, absolutely hate Jericho going over hook. Absolutely hate it. I hate the whole learning tree. Can Jericho just go away for a while? Yeah, the whole big bill Jericho Please. thing. I'm just <laughs> I don't want I don't want any of that. I get yeah, so bored. The, That's part of the yeah, awkwardness. The learning you know tree shit is whack. Yeah. There's just a like, lot of shit that I'm not like very excited about, and it just it's awkward. They, I would agree with you, Sean. They are doing some things to a degree right, but it's more long form storytelling in a way. So we've got to we got to wait for that build a little bit, and it, the build is always part of the journey, right? But I don't know. Again, just it's it's awkward and weird at the moment, and I'm just not feeling it to the extent like I'm I'm loving what WWE is doing right now. So with that said, anything we want to highlight from AEW at the moment before we throw it off to Backlash France and some of that results? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I'm cutting out here just because my internet connection is wonky. But yeah, we're actually having this game all around. Comment. I think you know, last week was, was a great show, healthy. and I just realized Mercedes was not winning. Mm. And... I think we're having internet trouble again, guys. We're like going in and out. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. Go ahead. Um, John, you got it. You got the yeah, mic. No. Uh, with Mercedes, like, it's like you said, like, you, you, you brought her back to wait. You brought Will Ospreay out. You debuted him to wait. You brought Kenny back early to wait. And it's, it's, it's stupid. You know, you can just do big nets. You don't have to bring them back and, like, have all this shit and then be like, oh, they have a match in two months. It's like, what? Come on, man. Like, you know, like, it just it makes zero sense. Build up other um, motherfuckers. And, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Build up this wrestling and, roster and, that deserves shine. Give them some I think, shine. I think they are. Like, in, like, the Tony shit, for everything that I, I didn't like about Tony's character, I like what they're doing now where they're kind of, you know, like, Deanna's kind of turning heel, right? I don't know if you guys peep that. Uh, so Deanna's turning heel. You know, they're, they're kind of doing like this baby face Tony now where she's like caring for Mariah, but it's after Mina right. came back. So like, I think there's going to be some kind of like custody battle for yeah. Mariah's love between Mina and Tony. So I, I love that setup, you know, but right. that's, and that's the story I was waiting for. And like, but also like, I, I would love to see like a package of like Mina and Mariah's whole history. You know, and like when they, she kind of came out and did the kiss thing, like I was just like, wait, whoa, like I knew who Mina was, but I didn't know her and Mar Mariah were like a tag team or had like this love angle before. Right. And like I wish they would have, you know, like show the, like show a clip, put a clip together, man, like a quick 15, 20 second clip. Like that's all it needs. Like it's not much to ask for. Like yeah. you have this whole team, do it. But, um, but yeah, I mean, other than that, I mean, tonight, like I like I love like I told you guys like watch the Willow Sky Blue 
match. I don't know if you guys got a chance to check that out, that that hardcore match. That was great. I love what they're doing with Willow outside of kind of like teasing Mercedes. Like it's just it's such it's too much of a long burn. You know, like you should have just held off on having Mercedes come back until like the month, like this month leading up to double or nothing. Right. Like you could have debuted her in May. And then we'd be fine. But instead you debuted her in like fucking March. Yep. <laughs> she doesn't have a match until the end of May. Come on, man. It's out. Get out of here. But yeah, a lot of still, I see the turn, but there's still a lot of things. I'm just like, that's corny. You know, Chris Jericho shit, corny. Porn. Get over Big Bill, I guess. That's the idea. But also, why? Yeah. The why yeah. is the appropriate question. Why? You know, like Adam Cole came back, but there's not like a bunch of like emphasis on that. But like, is he even ready to wrestle? Why bring him back if he's not ready to wrestle? You know what I mean? So it's just, yeah, I don't know. But anyway. <laughs> so we're due doing AEW at the moment to a degree. It's just ah, not very exciting. I'm not excited. Yeah. Um, Webstyle, you're good it's on AEW? Better. It's getting better. They're doing things, much like Sean said, like it's turning a corner. Mm. Right now, just, I'm just a wait and see, but and, and I hate to say this, and I think it's a perfect say we're going to backlash. It is very hard when the biggest wrestling company is literally firing at all cylinders. Right that is true. All right. That is very hard. To have any kind of wrestling show and when AEW themselves, like they're aiming to be competition for the big boy, and the big boys find all cylinders and you're you're not in comparison. It's you can't help but compare. You, yeah. you can't help but you know make those distinctions and, and call out those criticisms because they position themselves that way. So we're gonna criticize them that way. Yep. Yeah, I, I am looking forward to the Adam Copeland Brody King match tonight, though. Like that is the only thing I'm looking forward to tonight because that that has also been a pretty good story of like leading up to this big battle between Malachi and Adam, you know, which they have done well because there are three people in the House of Black. Yeah, you know, so you're able to like have these feuds, one one feuds with Adam with all of them, and then leading up to the final boss. Malachi Black. <laughs> um, and they've done a good job of like keeping them kind of separated. So like when they first when they finally fight, it's going to feel like a main event match. And it will be at a main, it will be a double or nothing. So it will be a main event match. But like that's the build up that you need. You know, other things are like they're giving you all these main event matches on dynamite, which yeah, I understand the reasoning, but like then but then you kind of sully the main event, the main event card. You know what I mean? So yeah, understood. I hear that. I hear that. All right. Well, let's uh, come over to Le Français, to Lyon, Lyon, France, Backlash, France. Uh, talk about some of the results. Uh, I think we pretty much made these predictions, if I'm not mistaken. I think we. Uh, Predicted all these, uh, what would it be? Even though, you know, I think I think I threw a wild yeah. card out there that I would have yeah. loved to have seen Naomi, uh, even though I said Bailey, but, you know, I would have loved just just because I wanted to add to this moment right here. Uh, but let's yeah. talk a little bit about some of those matches that we got. Let's start off with uh, Bloodline. We got a surprise appearance. Uh, I, I remember we got a little text from Webster Style over there. Yeah. I, I hadn't even watched it yet because I didn't know that the, I, I, I thought it was going to be seven o'clock the, in the evening Saturday, but it was actually during the day of Saturday that Backlash fans forgetting yeah. that, you know, they're overseas. So you kind of okay. ruined the moment, Webster Sal, but it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. I, look, I was on a bus to Philly going to Fan Expo, and yeah. I'm just scrolling through because I'm on the bus. What else am I going to do? And I see this. I'm like, what the? <laughs> Holy so how are we feeling it. about the Gorillas uh, of Destiny? Now they're in alliance with Solo uh let's talk about this matchup real quick man what, what did you think about it uh, i'm gonna start with you Webster Style. So are you familiar with the god and now they're here at wwe yes, i am i am excited just that they've been fantasy booking them versus usos for years and the fact that they signed tongalo and nobody knew yeah like 
I loved it. Like everybody thought it would be Jacob Fatu, and nope, it was yep. Tongaloa that came out. Even though they do have Fatu right now, and then there's uh, notes that they're trying to hold him a little bit because they don't want to take away Solo what, Shine what? and what he's doing, which I understand, but at the same time, damn, like because we want that too. So, what do you think about it, Sean? Always playing that good. Man. I, I mean, I, I think they gooped us very well. You know, they they let it leak that Jacob was signed. Everyone thought Jacob was going on a debut and ended up being Tonga. So, like, uh, I like it. And yet again, it builds up, you know, the whole custody, like bloodline versus bloodline, you know, NWO versus Wolfpack, you know, like it, it builds, it's building that story, right? Um, and yeah, I mean, people are mad, you know, saying Tonga like botched his first appearance because the ref had to pull himself out. Yeah, and people are too critical, you know, like let this play out. Let us see where it goes. You know, we're going to have the custody of fucking Paul Heyman battle you know <laughs> it's going to be it's going to be great yeah can that i finish on i saw that and i saw the video that people talk about that i'm like they're fucking professionals that ref like he knew his shit he's like all right this ain't happening i'm gonna make this shit happen i loved it i don't care he botched it that just speaks the professionalism of that referee and of the company in general like all right we're gonna make this happen yeah i love it Someone was under the ring with him. So, like, maybe he didn't get the cue fast enough right. from the person. You know what I mean? Like, right. it could be so many factors. And people are just like, oh, look, this botch king here. I'm like, leave the guy the fuck alone. Like, let him cook for a little while. Let's see what they can muster up. Like I said, the the level of acting, we need the Usos back to that acting, right? Like, you know, when Bloodline was hot and heavy, when Sammy was honorary Oose, like Jay sold the performances, mm -hmm. right? Like that emotion. Let's see what they can do. I, I don't think it's going to be to the same caliber. You know, like they're, they're, you know, the acting is not probably there. Um, but let's see, you know, let's, let's give them a chance to cook and be these like ultimate heels and then have the Usos come together and have Roman try to like mend the fence and be, and this is what they want. Ultimately, they wanted Roman to be a baby face. And this is what they had to do. They had to make him a heel for so long. And now he's going to be the, the, the string that pulls everything back together and heals everything. And then he's going to fight the rock because rocks the final boss. <laughs> and now they're going to have what they wanted. They, they wanted Roman as a baby face. The crowd rejected it for so long. And now I'm pretty sure the crowd's ready for a baby face Roman. Yep. Yep. So so we're excited with the Gorillas of Destiny. And we saw a glimpse of it, uh, you know, towards the, the 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 if you were watching the pay-per-view, um, I know we were well, premium live event. Uh they gave us a glimpse when they were backstage after that effect. Uh G O D and Paul, they all ran across Jay right before his match. So so we saw a little bit of that, uh, mm -hmm. which is just awesome. Yeah. Um, but uh what do you think about the you know the the thing that they're saying? We were we we're all thinking Jacob Fatu. Um, but now that they're going to hold him a little bit because now we have G.O.D., which they took us by surprise. But do you all think that if they were to do Fatu right now, that might take away a little bit of that solo shine? Or do, are you or do you I, think it'll be fine if they go ahead and bring so, out Fatu? I think they're going to wait. Because I feel like Jacob Fatu will be on the other side. Mm. You know, with... Jimmy and Jay, really? I do not think that they will be on. So yeah, like because I like if I think about it this way, it's Solo, the Gorillas, that's three, and then if the Rock is controlling them, that's four, and then you have Roman on the other side, which is comparable to Rock. Then you have Jimmy and Jay. You're missing another one, so that's Jacob. So then it's four and four. It just makes sense in my War head. Games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. War yeah. games, exactly. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's just, it, it, that makes sense to me. Like if they put Jacob over with solo and them, that's, that's overpowered. Yeah. Like if the rock is really, you know, controlling it, like, you know what I mean? Like, but, but we'll see, uh, maybe they will do that. And then Sammy will go and help the Usos and Roman, you know, old, like old school styles, you know, yeah. so who maybe. <laughs> All right. So exciting, uh, times as bloodline fans, they're not done. We're still putting those ones, uh, would you say? 
All right, y'all. Let's head over. Um, speaking of, you know, I'm gonna hold that one. Um, let's let's go over to Bailey, Naomi, Tiffany Stratton, Tiffy Time. Crowd was all about some Tiffy Time. Uh, I'm sure if you guys were watching, you saw that. Uh, what do y'all think about this one? No. Uh, Web style. I know you were you were you're on route to to the event and everything. Uh, did you catch uh, anything afterwards? Uh, what do you think of this match? I caught mostly clips. Um, I, I with the way the week is going, I haven't sat down to watch it yet. That that's actually my plan for this weekend, hopefully. Uh, but from what I've seen and saw in the clips, it seemed like a pretty decent match. Um, I can't really give that much on it because I didn't watch the whole thing. Um, I'm happy with the outcome. I think the outcome we all uh, pretty much expected. I did like that camaraderie between Bailey and um, Naomi at the end, the hug and everything, and the sign of respect. I, I feel that. Uh, but like I said, what I've seen, it seemed like a pretty decent match. All right. What about you, Sean? Uh, and you've been somewhat critical of, of of Tiffy time. Do you think she showed a little bit? And so, what what do you think overall of the match? First of which, I'm going to rebuke what you said about the crowd being behind Tiffy. Oh, I think the Australian crowd was a lot more behind Tiffy because of certain reasons. Because she is a white woman. Yeah, yeah. And they yeah. kind of paid dust to all the black women. I think it was the opposite here. They went ape shit for Naomi. Oh, they were. They were. But they I think they're. I think they gave everybody because time. I don't think so. Because Ooh. here's the thing. I think because like me and Maki were talking about it, France is very much like a, a party club music. They were feeling the glow track. <laughs> yes. And that's what I'm getting at is like they were going ape shit for like that EDM, you know, glow shit. Like they were it like that that crowd was insane. I don't know how they were on par with all of their chants, but like every chant was flawless yeah. and it was insane. But yeah, the, the, the Naomi intro and even Bailey got a good pop more so than Tiffy, you know? So, and I'm not saying that this, you know, like I said, Tiffy's amazing in the ring, right? The gear looked great. You know, she is an amazing performer. She is very fun to watch. You know, but she's also very fun to hate. I mean, she's a good heel, right? Oh, so, perfect heel. Um, yeah, I'm not taking anything away from her, but yeah, I definitely heard that. I definitely heard that crowd pop more for Naomi this time, around. more so than Australia, right? Like, like I said, oh, definitely. Australia, definitely. like yeah, they paid Naomi dust, and it, you, you know why, right? France, complete opposite. They were just like they were loving it, right? Same with the the background photo you have here, like loving it. Um, but yeah, no, it was a great match. I, I like the camaraderie at the end, like you said, what style? Like it was, yeah, I was in my stomach, like there was a pit in my stomach where I thought maybe Naomi was going to betray Bailey. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, what if that happens? I don't know how I'm going to feel, but it didn't happen, so I'm glad it didn't. But uh, but I'm curious to see, you know, we've talked about our theories, yeah. Um, so I'm curious to see. I know this is going to pop up, I think what they're on SmackDown, so. Uh, we'll see what happens on SmackDown here. Uh, coming. I don't think Friday. they're gonna make heel or heel. Uh, I don't see them not being faces for for Naomi and Bailey. Bailey definitely yeah, ain't gonna be a, a heel yeah. anymore. She's now a face, right? And Naomi, she she she's a straight. No, I know. Fan. I meant I meant more so. I meant more so the two behind you. Oh my! Right the there. two the uh, man. They you know, we'll we'll get there. We'll get there. They. I swear to God, they better yeah, let them there. be faces for a while and let them be a team for a while. Let them marinate, let them cook, because I just love their their energy together. It's just it's yeah. exhilarating. I love them. All right, before we get there, before we get there, let's talk Damian Priest, Jay Uso. Um, the crowd was lit for Jay. Main event, Jay Uso, and I love he kind of gave a nod to Bray real quick, yeah. saying that the Fireflies were out there. Uh, yeah. Let me go back to you, Webster style. What did you think about this one? Uh, with what you caught, I I enjoyed the match. I I more so in enjoying the the storytelling. You know the whole what's going on with Judgment Day. Oh yeah, so, we gotta talk on this because there were some Judgment Day teases in this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I I am enjoying the storytelling, especially with Rio is essentially the glue gone. There's so many things going on with that. And you saw that in this match, you know, with JD and Ben. 
also. Um, I love that. I thought the ma- I don't. I didn't not like any match on the card. I'll put it that. Way, um, from what I've seen so far. Uh, so, like I said, these are matches what I've seen so far. But the storytelling and the advancing that is good. In I am interested to see if this could possibly turn Damian face down the line. Mm. Mm. Because that's what I, that's the vibe I'm getting with the sort of things that are going on, especially with him. Like, I don't need your help. I don't want your help. I can do this on my own. You know, he's mm-hmm. not playing a typical hero role as champion. He's definitely has a mindset, at least the way he's portraying it, of he wants to be a champion, a, a fighting champion, but a champion and wins on his own and don't need help. So I can, I kind of see that coming. Okay. I How about you, that. Sean? What did you think about uh, this match? Yeah. Uh, overall, like I said, the fireflies coming out. You know, the crowd went ape shit with the fucking, the fucking, ha, 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 ha. Even saying yeet in a French accent. That was crazy. <laughs> um, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, it was, it was a very a hype crowd, very hype match. Um, you know, the Usos are good at selling and working the ring, but most of their matches are typically, you know what's going to happen, right? Like, you know the move sets. We know how it's kind of going to be structured. Which Judgment Day, they've always come and interfered. We knew that was coming. So it's, it's getting predictable, um, but I do like the, you know, oh, don't interfere, and then, like, mushing Finn at the end. Mushed um, it, like, mushed him, but, bro. Yes. Yes, that was crazy. I, that to me is where it's breaking even if that's, down the Judgment Day. Even if that's acting, I'm right. Go, we done, go. sir. We are done. I'm no longer JD anymore. Like, like fuck this. Or judgment yeah, Day. No. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no, I, I I like that. Um, I will go the opposite way of Webster style. I do not want to see uh, Damian Priest's face. I do not like him as face. I I don't. It's kind of one of those things where it's just like I, I could never see Baron Corbin his face. I want him to stay healed because I think he thrives in that heel role. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like Finn is more destined to be a face and can play the face role a lot better than Damien. I don't know how they do that because like what you're saying, the, how it's lining up, it looks like it's going that way because he wants to you know, be a fighting champion on his own. You know, which is a very face move. Right. Um, and I don't really know how they make Finn face from the situation he's in. You know, unless it's, you know, he tries to stage a coup and he thinks he has Damien behind him and he thinks he has JD behind him, but then all of a sudden JD and, and Dominic still pick Damien over Finn and they out Finn. Right. And that's the only way I see Finn being a face and then building his way back up and then beating Damien at, you know, SummerSlam or some shit, you know, for the belt. And he brings out Demon Finn all over again because Vince ruined Demon Finn. But now since Vince is gone, maybe they will do better by Demon Finn. Right. Um, so, uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, great, Matt. I, I love the story. Like even like, you know, with, with, Dominic kind of like chasing down Liv and now people are like showing like oh you know on Raw he had his bandana and then at the end of Raw he didn't and the Liv the Liv promo she had like a pink or or a purple thing sticking out of her pocket that looked like a bandana so like you know they're setting up a bunch of stories there with Judgment Day and there's going to be an implosion Um, so I'm curious and I'm happy about the way that the story's going I'm with it. I'm and with also, it. On, right. And uh, on Raw, uh, Damien did apologize to Finn and JD. Yeah, mm. So there was like a formal apology. So, which is yet again another face move. Right. So, I mean, like I said, like it looks like it's lining up that way. I just don't want it to happen because I don't like He's not that great of a promo to be a I face. Agree. And if you want to be a face, you have to be a very strong promo. I agree. I agree. And I didn't catch Raw, so I'm I'm a little bit back on that one. Um, 
I, I have some ideas and I've, I'm going to throw it to you once we get to a certain match of what I think may happen. Um, but the Judgment Day implosion is happening, y'all. It's kind of interesting. And uh, I, I think also with some new additions, uh, I, I uh, have some opinions where I think I and, and or would like to see some things go. Uh, let's move over to uh, the, the, the the one behind me, the, the match we've been uh, that I, you know, was in love with. Well, well, and wanted to see happen, but I actually take the back. The match wasn't. The match had it some great moments, but the match also had some weaknesses. Let's talk about the Bianca Belair, Jay Cargill against the Kabuki Warriors. I think there was some uh, some mishaps that happened. And talking about uh, we, you know, we we alluded to it earlier with the uh, bloodline and the ref thing. Uh, I think because they do things so right with them practicing matches, you know, b- the behind the scenes stuff of working where their spots are going to be. I, I think they figured it out, uh, but I, I'm curious if you both saw it while watching this match. Where, okay, no, Kyrie, you, you're posting. I, I think Sean, Sean just kind of gave me the nod. The the ref had to like make make certain moments were yeah. happening because of the timeline of what the scene was supposed to play out or the match was supposed to play out didn't all work. But I think it still yeah. was a great match, and we crowned obviously two superheroes. These women are the embodiment of superheroes. These are what superheroes want to be. Um, but also, no disrespect to the Kabuki Warriors, who are amazing, who helped them shine, to, to shine. Um, what do y'all think of this match? Uh, let me throw the Webster style, because you saw parts of it before I go to Sean uh, and with his thoughts. But what did you think of now we have two amazing, beautiful black women as our WWE champions? Webster style. I think overall, overall, this is the best thing they could have done for the women's tag titles. Now I love the Kabuki Warriors, uh, I, but I think them and Damage Control it, it it's kind of lost. It's not them, but the tag titles are kind of lost. Um, I think the match, like you said, was a good match. I just like that sequence in the end with Jade and Kyrie Sane, how she's literally just turning her around, flipping her around, <laughs> and then the yeah. finisher that sticks in my head. How she just like a rag doll. Like man, yeah, like that. That was just something. But I think this is a good look for the titles. Uh, they're going to be dominant champions uh, going forward, and it, I think it really is quite elevates the tag. It, it has the potential to elevate the women's tag title. Um, I think the Kabuki Warriors they were doing that that first run before Kyrie left the company. Um. They were doing that slightly with Jade, not Jade, but Sasha and Naomi. But again, that was under the old regime, and we know how that worked. I think that having it on these two um, is an excellent start. It just has to see how the booking goes. Definitely. And yeah. real quick, before you chime in, uh, Sean, with your thoughts, uh, one of the things that I read and saw online as well, fucking Asuka was like, could barely walk, was sick, but yet still came and performed and showed out. Again, mad respect to the Kabuki Warriors, Kyrie and, and Asuka. Uh, you know, they definitely elevated the titles, oh, yeah, and now Asuka's we got these two women that are going to elevate, but props to Asuka, though. Like, she, you know, Kyrie had a fill-in for some of that, you know, lag. Um, what do you think, Sean? Uh, yeah. I was going to mention that as well. You know, Asuka's been kind of going around and and being injured. Uh, Oh, man, we're having some lag, y'all. My work announcement was going off. All right, we're we're having a little bit of lag, guys. I think hopefully, man, this is sucking. Sorry, y'all that are watching this. Uh, Go ahead, Sean. Uh, There was some lag there. Oh, my bad. Uh, Yeah, the, the Asuka thing was crazy. That just came out. You know, working like the past month and a half with the fucked up knee, traveling all around the world. Yeah, a, a fucked up knee. Um, oh, because I thought like, this morning, like when I was getting ready for work, they talked about she was injured. I didn't, but that was before I guess all the reports came out. Dang. Yeah, yeah, she had like an industrial knee brace on, and like you can see in like some of the matches, like she's like on one leg, like trying right. to like not put pressure on her one knee. I think it's her left knee. Um, but yeah, you know, uh, and just with a smile. You know, like putting these two over in an amazing match, but it was great. The crowd was hot for everybody again, yet again. Like, like they had issues. Like, I think there was like 
a, a mass text alert to like the entire area about the noise levels right from the the arena from yeah, how I loud this was yeah, yeah I saw it, it was crazy crazy um and i mean the cameras were shaking it was insane but anyway uh this match was great you know uh, the kabuki warriors are just so talented like they're so good and so fun to watch you know uh with this match i mean a- everything that we knew was going to happen you know bianca was the workhorse and we knew that was going to happen jade did not <laughs> you know what i mean like jade was not tagged in a lot um did not have a lot of ring time and you know still working on the selling bit you know there's a couple of spots where i'm like wow like you didn't sell anything but i'm pretty sure you're just like overwhelmed right like i don't think it was purpose obviously like a charlotte does um <laughs> but uh but she still I, showed, I, out. showed out Hour. she showed out you know but like i said like there's still a bit and then you know like you said like the the weird miscue of like the ref being like oh no not the legal person you know like Kyrie, but then like Kyrie didn't even tag in, but then they did the jaded move to Kyrie and Pinder right after. I'm just like, yeah, it was kind of awkward. Tag back in. Yeah, it was very awkward. Now the 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 cool, you know, power bomb to shoulders, flip around, full Nelson jaded was an amazing combo, and it was a lot smoother. She did do it the sky blue in AEW. It just now is a lot more polished right. looking. You know, like it was a lot more fluid. And that was, and that is, that is a fucking signature, move, you know. And like I've talked about that before with like Tony Storms, uh, uh, whatever the fuck the, the the quick power driver she does. Like some some of the finishers just look boring, you know. Like this is a fucking finisher, you right. know. Like KOD is a fucking finisher, you know. Um, so yeah, I love these two together. They're gonna go far. I do think they turn heel. Pat, I don't. I do think they're probably going to be babyface for a little bit, but I, I see them turning on Naomi. And then, like I said, it's going to be Naomi and Bailey versus these two. They better and wait just, like two or three it, years. It makes the most sense. Don't do it yet. I don't. I don't <laughs> I, at least give me a year. I need a year with these two beautiful we'll women, man. Just, I, I mean, I mean, they're still going to be there. They're just going to be heels. And you know, not yet. You know, maybe Bianca gets rid of the braid. You know, heel Bianca doesn't have a braid anymore. <gasps> That'd be shocking. Yeah, it would shocking. be shocking. That would be shocking. I am excited for that. That I want to see what that looks like. Like I, I want to see everyone's take on being a heel. You know what I mean? Like I want to see if they thrive more at being a heel or thrive more in being a face. So I always like it when people can like work both sides. Like it's the Miz effect, right? Or the MJF effect. Like they're both. They're good on both sides. Mm-hmm. I want to. I want to. I want to see those people who can literally take it and run with it, no matter what it is, whether they're a heel or a face. They're like obviously, we know Bianca is a great face. Jade has been primarily heel throughout the AEW run. Uh, you know what I mean? Um, so to see her as a face is kind of, kind of interesting. You know, but she's like a face by association because she's with Bianca. Like, and because she like saved, you know, Naomi or something, you know what I mean? But like, not really a face by like the promo means of things. So, even, no, you're right. Because even when it was before the association with Naomi and Bianca, like how she came in, even her backstage uh, vignettes with Aldis and other people, it gave very heelish vibes. Yeah. So I'm I'm curious to see what they do, but I, I I do like we've never seen a heel beyond ever even in NXT. Like it's literally been like Hugger Bailey syndrome her whole duration, and then you know when Bailey first turned, everyone was like, "What the fuck?" But like then like it was like, "Whoa!" Like Bailey is like thriving as a heel, mm-hmm. you know. So like I think that is going to be the same scenario for Bianca. I think Bianca would fucking thrive. I agree. As he, like when she kind of like snatched at fucking Tiffy backstage in some of those segments, I was just like, oh, I'm ready. I'm ready. Like, I see the aggression. Like, I see it there. Like, I think that is just a switch that she has to hit and she's already there. You know what I mean? So right. I can't wait. Not yet. Not yet. I, 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 I can't say that I don't want to see that. 
uh, but I just I love this right now. I just love them how they Logo. are. So uh, I just wanted to exist uh, for a bit. All right, let's head up with the last match, and then I have some questions and some other ideas real quick. Um, but Cody Rhodes, AJ Styles, uh, what, what did you think of this match? Uh, I, I think we all knew Cody wasn't going to let it go, but did they give us a barn burner, uh, Webster style? Um, I didn't think it would be a good match considering the participants. I enjoyed it. That's one match I did end up watching. I just kind of skipped that once I got watched the rest of it. But I love the callbacks to his dad, especially considering uh, AJ faced his dad back in TNA for the NWA World Championship. I, I love that. Uh, I just thought it was a good match. These are two of my favorite wrestlers. Like I've been an AJ Styles fan since TNA, so I I may be a bit biased, but I enjoyed it. Okay. Sean, what did you think of uh, Cody versus AJ? Um, yet again, crowd was super hot. And this is usually when people, crowds usually die down, you know. Um, and the chant that they have for AJ Styles, we had to Google it. And it's literally in French. Like, he is phenomenal, phenomenal. Mm. And... I don't know how that crowd syncs up so easily. Right. They were amazing. Because over here in the States, you have two different chants going at the same time, one starting and then one starting as the other one's ending. It, it gets pretty bad over here. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with us. Uh, but, uh, well, France made it seem like, well, we got to step our shit up as fans here. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, they, they were just like all over it. Just I can only imagine being in that ring. And like having that energy, so like it was a great match. I mean, it, it was there were so many callbacks, you know. And even like AJ Styles, at first I was like, wait, it's like is this Judgment Day? Like when I saw his gear, I was like, is this Judgment Day vibes? And then I was just like, I saw something on Twitter, and someone was like, no, he's the Phenom, phenomenal, like the Undertaker, black and purple. And I was like, oh, like I'm not a big Undertaker person, so my brain doesn't like immediately go to that, yeah, I didn't but. Think either. But I was like, oh, the phenom, phenomenal. I'm picking it up now. I see I see the vision now. Uh, but at first, I was like, is he going to be like the new leader of Judgment Day? <laughs> like, is this <laughs> is it feel like Finn or Damien about to get ousted? And then all of a sudden, it goes from Edge to fucking Finn to Damien to Rhea to Damien to AJ Styles. <laughs> I would have laughed. But anyway, uh, great match. I mean, we knew... We knew it was going to happen. You know, like, the only belt turns we knew of was obviously the tag team. Yeah. Um, we predicted it. So, yeah. It was kind of a short card. It was, yeah. It was kind of it was a, only a five matches short card. Uh, yeah. Right here. I was just like, man, what about the tag team? Like, the men's tag team? So I didn't. I was kind of shocked. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, it and, was still and, great, and great, Paul, great card. Not, uh, yeah. you, know, you know, with his belt, the USA belt. You know, but uh, I wanted so with that being said, yeah. you know, not Within surprising with AJ and Cody. Um, but uh, you brought up you know, Judgment Day AJ Styles, possibly. I'm I'm a whole nother picture there, and from the other matches and by these new guys that just came on board with GOD, I think this might be a stretch. Judgment uh, Day is gonna implode. Gone. We've got Finn Balor, J.D. McDonough, yeah. that may not want to work with, yeah. you know, my man anymore. AJ Styles used to be a part of a certain club that Finn Balor started. Uh -huh. And we got the G.O.D., mm -hmm. some original members that were part of a certain club. I think with AJ not winning, we've got yeah. drama with Finn and, and, and the champ over there with Damien. We're going to see the birth of a new Bullet Club again. What say you gentlemen? To be the next chapter of these gentlemen's stories with Finn's story, with AJ stories. They've been losing in these pictures. It's now time to regroup and maybe go back to an OG club that they used to have before. Webster style, what say you? Would you I like to see that happen? I, I would love to see it and especially bring back Carl Anderson and Gals Anderson from NXT. But I don't see that happening for a long time simply because of the whole brother line. I don't see them involving Gorillas of Destiny and anything else outside of Bloodline. They could still do Bloodline stuff, I think. Yeah, I, I think it would take it away from the 
especially looking at what they're doing with <clears throat> Tomatong and MFT, I don't see how that translates to him having divided loyalties. Mm. Would work, in my opinion. So you don't think it's going to happen at all? No, maybe see. down the line. Maybe. I mean, we'll... Uh, well, you can start early. I say this is, year, maybe, you know, get Finn and AJ and, and JD. Because, again, AJ don't even have his crew with the Good Brothers no more. Like, they, that's squashed, and they're yeah, in yeah. NXT now. So what are you doing with these two former champions in AJ and Finn? Web, uh, Sean, let me throw it to you now. What do you think? No, you do see Bullet Club reborn or no? Um, I don't think so. Oh, I'm, I'm, I, I'm on my island by myself here. Go ahead. I think I think the E wants to fully distance himself from that. I mean, you still have Bullet Club Gold on AEW. You still have Bullet Club in Japan. I don't think they're gonna rock that boat. Really? Um, there might. You know, I could possibly see a faction down the line with some of them, you know, just for the history of it all. But it's not going to be Bullet Club by any means. It's going to be they're going to have a different faction name to it. You know, it's going to have no representation close to to Bullet Club because, um, I mean, they also have Shinsuke there, too. So, I mean, there, there's a lot of people in WWE right now who have originally been a Bullet Club. And I think there's too many at this point, you know, like there, there's what absolutely owns Bullet many. Club. Is that just because? Uh -huh. They're able to use it everywhere are the, and the logos, but I think both companies have been profiting off of it. Like, I'm very curious who owns I mean, they even if use there's it an, even an ownership NXT. there. Right. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, like, the world, like, there, there's so many ways this can go. Um, I do want to see AJ as a leader of something. I just... Yeah. But also, every time he's like in a faction, it's always with the Good Brothers, and it never really goes anywhere. You know, it just kind of fizzles out. So I don't, I don't know if they want to put AJ in another faction because, like, every time it's happened, it's just, it's, it's gone nowhere. Gotcha. All right, so I guess I'm on an island of relevancy <laughs> all by myself. Um, before we go, a lot of factions right now. That is true. That is true. But I think something's got to happen with Finn and, you know, Judgment Day is obviously going to be de destroyed. They're, they're separating. But what's up with AJ? Where, where does he go with everything that's happening right now? Like, I don't know. It's, it just seems kind of awkward with him um, because he's, he's you know, main event caliber kind of cat. Um, before we go, WrestleMania 2025, LV, Las Vegas, was announced. They're not going to Minnesota. They're not going to the Twin Cities. They're coming to Las Vegas. What do y'all think about that? Are you ready to put some money on the line and 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 then gamble and find your way to Vegas? Because I'm certainly contemplating it, gentlemen. How about you? What do you think about it uh, going to Vegas, real quick? I think it's a smart play. Yeah, um, I I know it was supposed to be Minneapolis. There was like banks leaked that it was supposed to be Minneapolis. I think. You know, they kind of Minneapolis themselves made mention to it. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know what happened there. You know, um, I don't know if there's a specific reason they went to Vegas or not. I have no clue. Um, I was excited for it to go to Minneapolis because we know people and we could have stayed with people there and we really wanted to go to it again. Uh, Vegas makes it a little harder for us to get to, uh, a little bit more I, expensive too. I see where you're tracking uh, now. So, <laughs> uh, it sucks. Yeah, kind of sucks on my my opinion of it but uh gotcha. you know you know we'll, we'll see yeah I, i'm i i i've uh i've got some connects there uh and so i'm kind of half excited and plus then there's a little bit more to do if you will even just beyond the wrestling the wrestling so uh there we go y'all that's been our k baby baby nrw ring general's podcast for this week uh any predictions before we get up out of here guys between now and next week uh, i don't think we have any events or a car to choose uh, but what would you like to see between now and next week uh, with anything that's going on on SmackDown, Raw, Collision, Rampage uh, as we head into next week? Any thoughts? I guess I'm not so much a predictor, but I'm curious to see who now they position to be a, a contender for Cody. Yeah. 
what storyline yeah. we're going to build from yeah. there. Yeah, what story are we going to tell now? To because the next PLE is in the end of the month. Yeah, that's the King of the Ring or King yeah. and Queen of the Ring or whatever. Jetta. Yeah. So they don't have much time to tell a new story. They can't not well. They cannot have him on the card. I don't think that that needs him on the card, but still. We'll see what happens, but I'm curious to see because it's not a lot of time to tell a tell a story in my opinion. Yeah, but I mean, he is a fighting champion too, so sure. I do think he'd take anybody on, but do like a quick tournament or some shit for a number one contender or whatever, yeah. and it's going to be meaningless. Uh, or it could start a storyline, you know? Um, who knows? Um, yeah, I, I don't. Uh, you know, doing a bunch of the king of the king, king and queen of the ring elimination, you know, or tournament matches right now. Um, I, I, I'm never really excited for the King of the Ring, Queen of the Ring matches. I mean, it doesn't really do anything. It hasn't meant anything since Booker, in my opinion, or, or King Barrett, you know. Um, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't do it. Like, Austin, well, we're not getting uh, there yet. We still got some weeks away. Won it. <laughs> so do you have so anything? Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. you meant uh, currently – Next week or two. Um, uh, yeah, I don't. Nothing you want to see. see? I, I, I want to watch Double or Nothing. Um, no. Uh, you know, like I said, the Malachi Black and the Brody King match. I'm looking forward to that, see how that plays out. Um, but that's going to culminate in Double or Nothing. And that's what I'm like, that's what I want to see. I want to see Double or Nothing. Like, I'm excited for it, but it's so far away. Um, and they're, 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 they're teasing it. All right, guys. Well, let's get up out of here. That has been this week's K Faby Baby and RW Ring Generals podcast. Website, what you got going on over at Sartorial and Geek? Uh, it's too much. But uh, today I published a video with uh, Nick's from Do You Speak Geek Media. So I interviewed him last week. Victoria Vale dropped, as well as my interview with Hanif from uh, Otaku Noir Box. I uh, just went to fan expo Philly, so I have a bunch of interviews and things. I have a lot that I need to edit and post. <laughs> so there's a lot coming in the next few weeks. So stay tuned. All right. How about you, Sean? Tell me about We Are Booties. Hey. So We Are Booties is our next show uh, for DC Browless monthly show. That is uh, June 15th. So, uh, you know, it's going to be all anime booties and burlesque and performance art stuff so if you like anime please check it out just go to Eventbrite and look up we have booties i guarantee you that there's only gonna be one thing pop up so that's us <laughs> all right there you go everybody check out we have booties check out sartorial and geek thank you sean thank you webster style it's your boy Cody p nerds rule the world you're here that's been our kfab baby, baby let us know what you're looking forward to in the world of wrestling in the comments uh, and then check out the rest of the stuff we got up on the channel, man. We got a lot of stuff coming and on the way. Uh, but let's talk about it, man, so we can feed and vibe with y'all. All right? Here we go. Let's get up out of here for Sean Mongol, the Webster style, your boy QP. We out of here in a one, two, three. Peace. You come in my face, I'm going to fight you. Well, you're not going to bust a nut anytime we're in the ring. I'm going to get off by cranking your knob just a little beyond the breaking point. When I get my hands on you, I'm going to eat your ass like a pot of collard greens, baby. I'm going to stretch his ass like it's never been stretched before. You can hide behind that commissioner's stuff just so long until I jerk a knot in your ass. And if you don't think I'm big enough, bro. And you grab a hold of me, and you'll know that I'm growing, my man. Within your hands, I will get as big as I need to be, as big as I need to be to do the job on you. The Rock just jerked Helmsley off. There's one part of our bodies that's soft, and it ain't soft all the time if you catch my meaning. I'm going to come on you like nobody's ever come on you before. Just you and I getting it on like two men should do. Oh, no. No, that, that, that fits right for me, boy. I'm coming hard.